Alpha more so come tanks and vests. We'll talk about investing, finance, and professional women. So today's in terms only. The investment we're going to talk today will be them to teach. First, I want to say happy Sunday, everyone. Have a great weekend, by the way. Respect to recording time of 7.45 a.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum could trade $4,241, about 2.83% so far. As you can see clearly on the left side of the corner, you know, with all the cryptos that I've laid out here, I'll say we're kind of a mixed bag right now, right? Um, I'll say majority of the coins are, you know, relatively healthy in terms of a rebound momentum right now. While some coins are still lagging off with respect to Dogecoin and Cardano, XRP are both, you know, and at the same time with our latest inclusion, uh, AVAX is also down about like 1.5-2% respectively collect and collectively at the same time. But overall market is relatively rebounding right now. So uh, I'll dive into the technical specifically for each one to see what's the momentum for these respective ones going forward. And before we do that, let's take a look at the news real quick. Um, I'll say collectively, you know, in a quantitative perspective, there isn't a lot of news that's percolated. Makes sense because it's Sunday um, and this is like a sweet spot in terms of like a non, you know, active time zone uh, on a media front. You know, us um, obviously, you know, today is a Sunday for both internationally, but also domestically. But it will arise a little bit more as the international side of the house starts to shift towards Monday morning as they prep ahead of the financial market all over again. So the news will start to pop up a little bit more around like 4.30 a.m. Uh, p.m. Uh, or a.m. on the international side of the house uh, to 5.30 p.m. on the eastern time or 5.30 a.m. on the international side of the house, right, as the morning start to arise, right? So we'll keep an eye out on the news front, but in so far in the last six hours so far, let's just look at the news real quick, right? So we start the first one on Cointelegraph about nine hours ago, we'll talk about BitMart, which is uh, obviously a crypto exchange that we're well aware of. Lost nearly $200 million in a hot wallet um, following the Ethereum Finance Smart Chain exploits. So it seems like this is another uh, problematic situation. Um, another two hundred million dollars, you know, with collective, um, you know, dollars, you know, from these transactors, that was vaporized uh, because of a hack, right? Um, right now, based on the order, based on the article and the verbiage that I read in in this uh, specific one, um, there isn't any new developments. They have not talked about a solution nor any legal replica um you know ramification um so it seems like this is just a lost cause at the moment based on what i'm reading so far so 200 million dollars is um you know in the in overall financial market for ethereum it's not a lot of money but 200 million dollars it's a lot of money for a lot of people right and uh, yeah this is something that we need to fix and uh, need to be corrected over time, right? You know, despite the positive value proposition of Ethereum, but we, as we get, you know, more, you know, scale into more of a commercialization front, you know, the privacy, the regulatory uh, infrastructure in both a technological front, on a technical front, but also in the commerce front needs to be well bound up and protected, right? Because $200 million um, on just, you know, imagine one day you wake up with your wallet just completely wiped out. And, you know, I mean, we have experienced that a lot of these crypto wallets don't have the best customer service either, right? And when there's $200 million lost with thousands of accounts, how are their customer supports going to be able to even going to, you know, maneuver this problem, you know, at some like a rudimentary level? But... Also, how is the legal team and the financial team nor the executive team going to be able to pay off this sunk cost, aka this $200 million, right? That's, um, you know, just, um, you know, if you put yourself in, in that person's shoes, you just, like, feel that, um, I just feel goosebumps, just like, wow, like, if I lost all my money waking up um, and you just, like, hang out with your family one day and just, like, waking up one day, and you check on your phone, it's like, whoa, half a like quarter million dollars of my 
assets is gone, just wiped out. And you cannot log in, you cannot just like put yourself in that shoes. Like that's really scary. Right, so I don't wish that on anybody, and I hope that we could fix that someday. And uh, this is something that is like the seventh, eighth occasion in the last six months so far. So the next one's on Bazinga about 17 hours ago. Top board Ape Yacht Club NFT sold for 90 million dollars. So this is a picture of um, a white hair monkey with a green background. I'll say the color scheme is quite interesting um, for 90 million dollars. Uh, it's like cool waspy monkey no glasses this time and the next one is talking about with respect to a perfect storm with respect to uh, the recent crash that we saw right um are we in a breakdown right and here's what some of the crypto bulls are saying um well frankly I i'm not a bull or a bear uh, i'm just speaking the technical language um, it seems like, you know, the crash was relatively sudden and it was obviously driving an outline to the chart. And what that really means is that it was fear. And, you know, every time when you see fear in your life, right, collectively, when you scare, you tend to do things irrationally and very quickly at the same time. So this was the perfect storm in terms of um, possibly a well curation on a media front, um, a well dumping. And to open up an opportunity for the whales to buy in and scoop up at the opportune time and level, right? And we know collectively that the 3,850, 3,475 was the dips. And that's why um, it was the perfect storm for the ones that think logically. And congrats again for you guys, you know, that were listening and following through this logical analysis. I would say that you guys are experiencing a relatively healthy weekend right now if you guys were able to pop the dip, right? Uh, that's pretty much on the news front, so let's just dive straight into the technicals. Um, so right now it's a recording time of 7.52 a.m. on the Eastern time. And right now it seems like we're back to where we were before. Um, no more, you know, bearishness. It seems like we're reversing back up right now. 47 out of 70. So it's like we're back to normalized level right now. Not like when we were way below at the earth crust. Right? Remember when we were at the 3,475, we were like way below 35, right? And that incentivized everybody to be buying back up again, right? So right now it seems like we're forming a cup and handle. Um, again, right, so the cup we have already formed a rim, right, and we, right now we're coming back up. So I actually see some bullishness ahead of us uh, for Ethereum, which I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if we're actually back to the game, you know, and continue to search up from there. So we'll see how that goes. It seems like the 4,000, you know, mark is very, very substantive. You can see clearly that's like a floor now, right? And this is good. This is healthy. Um, and I think right really the weekend dip was really a golden opportunity so i'm still jealous for you guys that actually bought in the dips bitcoin is coming back up um right now at the 32 out of 70 so i think bitcoin is still a buy right now despite the surge i mean right now you can see that clearly if you were able to buy the dips or get your limit order you know filled uh 42 was an absolutely golden steal time um, and congrats again for those actually bought it. <clears throat> Dogecoin right now, uh, 1757. Um, right now it's just still hovering away, kind of matching with the previous consolidation level, right? If you look into it, like you see these two mini candles here and then a, some consolidation level here. So right now we're just lingering on. Um, but again, right, anywhere around this level, I would say, Anywhere below this level is still very oversold. So I would say Dogecoin is not a terrible buy right now um, in terms of risk versus reward ratio. Definitely way better when we're at the 33.92, obviously. And Cardano right now, it's uh, basically bouncing between 134 to 145. Right now, it's not a terrible level because we're very oversold um, with the 31 up 70. You know what that means, right? So uh, obviously, if you could get into 122, that was like absolutely just a golden opportunity. But we are at we, where we at right now. Like myself, I overslept. <laughs> Not overslept, but I just couldn't make it on time because I was sleeping. So right now, it's not a terrible buy right now. 
Solana, you can see clearly we broke 200, um, and it seems like we're very bearish still. Uh, 44 out of 70, so ideally I'll just wait until we go back to 133 to 113 from here. XRP is at 82 cents right now. Um, at 27 out of 70, you know what that means. So we are basically contemplating do we go up to 88 or 78, right? And I think the chart is really, really bearish at the moment right now. But um, again, right, anywhere within the levels you know in these frames like 88 90 78 to 69 you saw from my technical risk management level charts um we are okay level right now we are at relatively attractive level let's just put it that way <clears throat> so it's not a terrible buy right now xrp uh polka dots again right anywhere from the current level all the way to 25 is still the dip and we are very oversold right now <clears throat> algorands uh, up about 12 percent Basically try to reverse back up right now, 170. So again, right, anywhere from right 160 to 150 is still the dip for Algorand. So right now is okay, not terrible, but not the best either. Shiba Inu, um, uh, up about 3%, basically. And you could see clearly we got to where we were saying before, the high 2800, uh, which was the dip, right? And right now with the 41, so... I still see we going go back down a little bit more, but so again, right for me to even feel comfortable buying this like, aka this meme coin, like from the twenty eight hundred to the nine hundred from here, max tax up about ten percent right now. It's very very weird looking, sixty out of seventy still oversold, uh, overbought. I mean, excuse me. So one seventy five, one forty three, one twenty still the dip, right? So whoever bought in at the one fifty seven at the dip, that was amazing for you. So congrats. AVAX at 91, um, down about 2%, still bearish, 42 out of 70, no signs of reversal yet. So anywhere around like the 81, 92, I think we will still get there because that's the logical resistance level. So these are levels I would go into 81, that's the first level, small risk, 60, 50. So respect the risk management level, these are the levels identified here so far. And let me know if you have any specific questions, right? Um, yeah, this weekend was def definitely, uh, a, you know, kind of a shock and awe situation. Uh, but for those actually think through the fear, think through the logics, um, you are able to come through, right? And now you're in the healthy territory at the moment, right? Uh, but never be too aggressive. Always think logically with respect to incurring the right risk tolerance that makes sense for you. That's why we put the levels here at fair, attractive steel, and you could incur more risk as we go down further, right? But I think uh, it's a relatively healthy rebound as expected, right? Uh, I think we still have some more surge coming uh, because whatever goes down really, really fast comes down just as fast or the opposite, right? Whatever goes down really, really fast or go up really, really fast goes down really fast, right? So... Hopefully this is helpful. Really appreciate you for dropping by on this Sunday again. And stay tuned for coming up. Take care. Bye.